Hey guys, Jessica Henry here. Just super happy to be with you today. I have kind of an exciting thing I wanted to do. Over the years, I've been asked to do a self-portrait and I've always been a little bit, I don't I don't know that I wanna do that. I'm, I'm not into looking at myself for long periods of time. So that was kind of a little bit of an awkward, I have tied them in the past and I don't mind doing a self-portrait, but um, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to, I don't know, just I'm really just not into that. But that being said, I have this picture that um, I will share with you later. Uh, it, it was taken of me a year ago while I was in Ireland. And due to the fact that I've been asked so many times about this, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do this. This, this particular picture, um, I was in Tipperary and I was um, looking at this small graveyard in front of this church. And it just, it was very windy, it was a very emotional day, and just going through my own personal emotional time right now, I thought, you know what, this is super timely. And so I thought maybe I would do this now. And I think that it would be good. So I'm not gonna waste a whole lot of time chit-chatting, and um, I think that I will just jump right in. I wanted to tell you that this is going to be, today is gonna be live, because I'm gonna lay the um, foundation in of just the drawing, and um, getting it kind of put into place. And that'll be it for today. Next Friday, I'm gonna do part two. I, this may be more than two or three paintings or um, videos, so it'll be a series. And I may go live, I may not. I may just do the video separately and then upload it. But regardless, that's what I'm gonna do. So I have this little self-portrait, so let's jump in. <laughs> um, okay, so I have here an 18 by 24 canvas. I've put a tone on it. I did a little bit darker than what I normally do because I may just let some of this show through. So this is burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, a little bit of yellow ochre, and then um, Gamsol. So I put it on darker than what I need and then I rub it off. So I did this yesterday. Okay, so I have my computer sitting right here on my still life stand because I'm gonna, I've got my image here. I can make it bigger and so forth. I love that. And then I have my palette. I must be sitting down today, so I'll pull the camera closer when I get into actually painting. So this is my palette, and I do make and sell these. I'll, I'll put the information down below if you are interested in securing one of these for yourself. Um, they're, they're lightweight, made of birch, um, and balanced. Anyway, so I have on here, um, all I'm going to use, I'm probably not even going to use all these colors today, but I have titanium white, cad yellow medium, I do have some of these reds. I'm probably not gonna be getting much into reds. I'll, honestly, all I'm really gonna be using are probably these three today. Um, just the, <laughs> hi guys, good to see you. I'm just gonna use um, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, just to, to kind of lay in exactly where I want things to be. Yellow ochre. I do have um, phthalo green and alizarin crimson on there. I may use those, I may not. So anyway, that is what I have. I've got my, um, little canister of Gamsol and I have my little container here of linseed oil. I probably won't be getting to this today because all I'm going to be doing is working on just mapping it in. All right, good to see you guys. Happy to be here and if you just missed it or you're just joining, I'm doing a self-portrait today so <laughs> should be fun. I am though working from a, um, a computer picture. You can um, have another easel and set up if you're gonna do a self-portrait. Just I, I've done it before where I set another easel up, put a mirror on it and just go the old-fashioned way and do that too. But I'm not gonna do that today. <laughs> so um, anyway, I'm gonna squeeze in here and get going this way. So moving this camera so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I have my paper towels here down here. <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, I think that that's about as close as I'm going to get the camera. The reason I'm going to do this, film this other ways, other times, is because there are times in the painting of this that I'm going to want to zoom in. So I want to make sure that I am not um, going to be in your way here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just, just taking a small brush. I'm going to just figure out size and placement and composition. I love the composition of this photo already. Um, you can kind of see it. That's me. Um, I'm standing here at this graveyard in Ireland. There's some interesting old graves in here and there's some landscape, which I thought was kind of fun too, because then I can also incorporate a little bit of landscape painting. And then there's these old stone um, pillars. I was kind of looking between these, this little gap in the wall out at the this graveyard so um it's it's just really you know deeply 
symbolic and spiritual. And of course, the fact that I was in Ireland um, just was really special to me. So my palette is down here. You're not going to see much of it today because all I'm going to do is work on the drawing of this. And um, so let's get that going. So grabbing a little bit of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, I just like to start out with an inky soupy mixture. So what I want to do is decide how much of this canvas is going to be devoted to me <laughs> and how much about for the rest of the picture. This is a square photograph and I've got a rectangle here. So I want to try to adjust that to make it um, work on here because we don't hang that up on the wall. We hang this up on the wall in theory. Okay, so um, if I don't talk for a few minutes because I'm using my right brain and really kind of um, being analytical and taking into these, taking into account these different things. So let's see if I, I kind of like a little more headspace and I like to have more visual space for me to look at. So if my head is roughly, um, what would that be like if it was that size? So let's see if my torso is kind of in here. Where am I going with that? If this brick or stone thing, it's up here above my head. I kind of like that. I don't want to give it too much dark space because too much is too much. So let's maybe bring that off. I think you can still see it. Can I make erase? Yes, I can definitely erase. That's why I love to do this with the brush because you'll see I'm going to be doing a lot of editing on this. Um, and you just It's very easy just to wipe it off like that. Um, and then you can dip your brush in to the thinner and work on it that way too. Okay, so that has an interesting feel. I kind of like not too much there. And I don't want to bring it all the way up to the corner, so I'm going to let some of the sky go out that way. Um, is this a good place for my head? I like that it's kind of off-center. Um, and I like that much headspace, so that means that this other stone thing is right here. Let's kind of give it some information. We'll just let that fade into ambiguity because we don't really know, whatever. Okay, I think that the size and placement of my head right here is going to be fine. So that being the case, if that's where my center of interest is, then I need to make the focus so that I'm, I'm always thinking about where and how I want the eye to travel in a painting. So let's say we enter kind of down here and we get to play around this area and we exit out this way. So it's just kind of a really simple, straightforward like that. I do think that there are some, going to be some nice strong contrast issues right in here where the scarf comes back down this way. Okay, and then the brick I want some of that algae on here. Okay, and then let's just kind of map out where this yard stuff is going on back here. And I like how um, this scarf I bought while I was in Ireland, staying at a bed and breakfast in Tipperary. And I picked this one in particular because the green matched the grass of Ireland. It just really reminded me of that. So what I would like to do, and one of the things I was thinking about when I was planning this is to make the green of the scarf blend in with the grass back here. So I've got sort of a gravestone here. And the wall of the cemetery goes right about there. And then there's sort of a rolling meadow here. And then a clump of trees. You can probably hardly see that on there. <laughs> I'll make it a little darker. Then there's trees. And then there is where the trees meet the sky. Okay, what I have here, I don't like this. I've got V, V, V. So it's easy to do things like that. So you want to just make sure that those sort of things don't happen. And just mix them up a little bit. I'll fiddle around with all that when I get to that area. Okay, so essentials. Let's get the drawing in place. That is basically how I start the composition of a painting. Very, um, very simple. Not a whole lot to it. All right, so let's jump in. If my head is this tall, I need to figure out how much of the rest of me I can fit in there. 
So let's assume that I, I liked this, where my jaw comes this way, my neck, scarf. I'm just gonna mark this as the height of my head. So um, I'm gonna come over here to my computer. It would have been easier if I'd printed this out and then I could just measure it on a piece of paper, but I didn't. So we're gonna pretend like this is like actually in life. This is what I would do with the real model when I was at the classical school. On my brush, the tip of the brush is at the top of my head and then I slide my thumb down the brush to mark, to make this mark on me. So I have to be careful not to bend my arm. I have to keep it very straight because if it's bent, then I have variables. So locking my arm and keeping it straight. Tip of the brush at the top of my head. My thumb is at where the scarf meets my neck. That's one head. Now I'm gonna take this unit of measurement and go down. And I'm gonna, from here then, I'm measuring down this way over there. Tip of my brush down, I see that it it's about where that shoulder mark is. And don't be appalled, but I'm actually writing on my computer screen. That's one head. <laughs> um, and then two heads down from there. One more head down from there. Where was that? Sorry. About mid-arm. Let me double check that measurement because, nope, it's lower than that. Okay. And then, so it's about one, two and a half heads down. Okay, so I come over here to this and I determined that this was my truth. This is what I want to go from. So that's one. Okay, so here's one. Mark. And two. And then about a half a head. Okay, so these marks that I just did on here match the marks that, yes, I did write on my computer. <laughs> we don't tell anybody that. It's my computer, so who cares, right? And they do wipe off, P.S. Okay, so that is my established how many heads high this is. Let's give it a plumb line. So I'm going to determine if I were to cut that image of me in half, where would that, where is the most significant dividing line? About uh, in front of the ear. So locking my pinky, um, this might, I don't, might not give me very much space. I have to make more inky mixture down here. So locking my pinky, let's determine that the front of my ear is going to be about here. I lock it here and I hold my brush really tight and I just drop my plumb line down. And if you lock your pinky, you can get a nice straight line, pretty much. So I don't have to draw that one on my computer. I can just hold my brush up and say, there it is, there's my plumb line. All right, so that's in a nutshell how we lay out that right there. So what I'm going to do now is kind of map out the overall structure and I'm going to keep my um, working here very loose and um, just straightforward. Sorry, I have to, I have to hydrate. <laughs> okay. So top of my head, how much information is on that side? of the plumb line, and then how much is on this side of that plumb line. So my ear is somewhere in about the middle, so I'm just going to put some tentative marks, sort of just to suggest. Um, and these aren't, these may not be accurate, I can always double check later. All right, and then my forehead, let's just say that the front of my face goes about like that. And I can, what I'm gonna do now is go from the ear over this way, I'm gonna measure that distance, then I'm gonna compare it to this distance and see where, where I am with that relative um, proximity. I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for. So the front of my face is comparable to two of these back here. So what that means is I measured, I, I took this measurement here and I determined that that 
is equivalent to two of them on this side. Okay, let's check that. One and then two. So I do have that in about the right place. And that's my cheek, so that means my nose and mouth and stuff is gonna be out in front. Okay, so getting things laid in place it always looks kind of weird and choppy and blocky and stuff as you're going along, but that's okay. But I like these really strong, solid value masses on here. Like, the whole lower, lower portion of my head is kind of in this nice, dark, strong shadow back there, and I like those strong angles. And um, then I've got the scarf, so I'm going to just draw in the scarf in place. Oh, it was so cold and windy on this day. And, um, and I'm going to check uh, this distance here. I'm going to use that to double check other places around here. So going over to here from the front of my ear to my cheek where it about meets my nose, that's, that's that passage there. Without moving my finger, I'm checking the width of this scarf. Okay, so that's about that, that's about that, good. Okay, so that can be within a foot anyway, that doesn't have to be super exact. But sometimes, as we move along, something doesn't seem like it's a very complicated thing, but what can happen is this. And I'll, I'll demonstrate on here so I can show you how people can get really messed up. Okay, so I'm going to do this, the zipper on my jacket. Then I'm going to do my arm. And I'm just looking at my arm and where it goes. And then, oh, I see it bends down here. And, and as you get going along, before you know it, things can get disproportionate. So you have to, even if it seems um, kind of simple, like, well, I don't know how an arm is shaped. I mean, double check. Double check because everyone can get carried away with just following along something and not realizing, but if you don't take it all in a whole, you can get it dis disoriented. I would say it's just like life. Look at the whole big picture because you, if you just focus on little details, you can get, um, you can really get things messed up in a big hurry. All right, so I'm checking where these things are hitting. And over here on um, the, the back of my jacket, I'm drawing a line straight up from the back of my jacket to the back of my head, okay? Using my brush, I come over here to the back of my head. I'm, and I'm also, you can't really see it, but I'm squinting one eye like this, and I squint one, my other eye way down, and that's how you can simplify things. So that's where the back of the jacket is. I'm also looking at this whole passage here behind my head and that's called negative space so back here behind the head the scarf the jacket and so I'm just drawing this shape okay so when all else fails and you're not you know, frustrated with drawing a thing draw what the thing isn't and sometimes that helps to get your mind in that abstract shape Rounding out the corner of the scarf and how it folds. And as it comes around. So all of these things I'm gonna really have fun playing with. Um, Kind of maybe I'll maybe even do some splashing and dribbling and whatever, um, but I think that you'll enjoy watching this one. Like I said, if you're if you're just joining me, this is going to be part of a series, and um, going to work on this together with you. I won't do one single mark on this if we're not together, whether it is in a private video. I mean, like if I make it not live, and like a pre-edited. I'll do all of it on camera, so you can um, be together. We can we can do this together. I think it'll be kind of fun. Um, 
And also, while y'all are here, I wanted to mention too, if, if you're not aware, I am um, executive director of the Renaissance Academy of Fine Arts. And that being said, we are about to start our portrait division, portrait um, module. And we have six weeks planned for that. All of our different modules are in time segments. Some of them are just a couple weeks, some are, um, you know, longer. Portraits we devoted six weeks to because I think a lot of people really do enjoy doing portraits. Or, or they want to get better at it, they want to enjoy it, but um, sometimes, you know, we can tend to get really frustrated. Well, I want to give people the tools to be able to do whatever you want. I really believe anyone can do art. Anyone can learn to paint or draw if you really want to. I have no doubt whatsoever about that. Drawing my, um, just looking at my plumb line on here, seeing where that shoulder, the deltoid, comes about like that. Okay. I think I should bring that in a little bit. If I miss your comments, I, I, I found that I can actually double check everyone's comments afterwards and I know how to do that, so I'm very thankful about that. So if I miss them, I will get to your comments as soon as I can. Alright, so here we go. And the scarf comes, comparing it to the other side of the scarf, it's about like that. Angle is off. This angle comes out more. All right, and then I keep wanting to say her hands. Her hands. <laughs> Whoever that girl is, uh, they're over here. And I thought, how am I going to do these hands? Because they really look like weird abstract shapes. I mean, it's not like you look at a hand, it looks normal. Um, so I'm going to... I'm going to try to suggest, I do love doing hands, I, I'm not afraid of them, but they are going to live in that little sphere right in there. And then I've got my arm here doing some foreshortening thing, like this. So we'll let that just kind of foreshorten its way right over there. Um, and then this is all really dark shadow back in here. So this will be a nice solid value mass composition. Um, yeah, so this hand, hands, arms, and there's that. So that elbow's too low, bring that up. And I don't even know where the front of me begins and this rock wall begins because that's all a dark value. So who cares? All right. Gravestone. Another gravestone back here. Just mapping out kind of some two, uh, where the different compositional elements are going to be for that. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do now is kind of just refine some of these value masses with a little bit bigger brush. And um, again, just ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And I just want, I'm really not using um, linseed oil yet. Like I said, I wasn't really gonna use that today but I want to map out where these value pa uh, patterns are gonna go. These are important in the overall design of this painting. Let's get some more blue in there. Right now it's too, too brown. Okay. That pretty much just blends into the background, so, or the back of my jacket, so let's just do that. Where we don't see an edge, don't make one up, just lose it. <laughs> Oops. Let's put some over here, too. Why not? Yeah, I think that that's, that's going to have a strong, 
sort of almost a vignette quality to this, which I think is really cool. One of the things that really drew me to this um, image too was that quality of uh, how it's just framed in. And um, there's almost that spiritual connection between we're in this life, but we're looking out at, you know, a graveyard and people that have moved on into the next life. And there's a lot of symbolism there, and I think that that's really profound. So um, I like that. Now I'm going to get choked up. <laughs> Sorry. composition. Where are my little accents going to go? And to what degree are they going to be pronounced? So my forehead being pretty white there against that black tree, I'm going to um, darken that tree back there because I want that to really accentuate. Our eye is always drawn to the area of the greatest contrast. So I want that to stand out. And let's give that some strength. And then I've got a little of land as it comes that way. So the back of my head, oops, that's too brown. The back of my head here kind of blends into this passage. Oh, don't leave me. Okay. So what, one thing that I want to call to your attention is when composing, um, if you think of all of your darks and or lights as being like a cattle pasture <laughs> and, and all your little cattle can wander around from area to area, that's what you want. So like I have them coming up this, over, down around my head in this area. Um, maybe they can scootle around this way. I've got this whole passage back in here under the scarf. And it connects to the jacket. This comes over to here, connects with here. Actually, this is all black, so let's darken all that in. And when you darken in a value like this, you can really start to see your drawing, if there's errors or whatever. Now, there is a slight value shift from the front of the jacket, from the back of the jacket to the front. So I want to definitely be careful about that. So if I squint way down at all that, I can see my drawing. Yeah. Okay, so I like that. And I don't mind that this piece of value dark stands by itself because it's helping to draw the eye in this way. So I will definitely work on leading like that. And that, that triangular composition too, leading to the center of interest, is a pyramid type design suggesting strength and, and solidarity. Whew, that sounds profound. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, so um, just getting these things a little bit more accurate in there. Okay, so how are we doing for time? Okay, we did that in a half an hour. We're doing good. All right, now I'm gonna put this brush aside and get one that's a little bit smaller and I think with this one, what I'm going to do is pull out some of the highlights. So now, um, someone was asking about erasing, dipping my brush in the Gamsol, going to rub out the areas where I want stronger lights. So that way I can have the three main values ready to go when I start um, next time. So like I said, I had toned this canvas. I toned it last night, actually. And um, I wasn't sure how much I was going to be able to rub out today, but it seems I'm still able to. So that's good. And like I said before, I really do want the face to get the most light. So I'm squinting down at it, looking to see where these passages of um, the brightest areas are. And rubbing that out, just erasing. And then you can take your paper towel and just kind of rub a little bit on there too. Yep, it does erase. <laughs> so just like that. I actually kind of really like this effect. It, um, when you rub it out, 
it sort of almost has that almost like skin or like a ghostly quality and I think almost like skin or like a ghostly quality and I think that's kind of interesting too. Getting rid of my plumb line because I'm satisfied that everything is pretty much where it's going to go. Uh, ear in this area. Typically your ear, top of your ear is right in line with your eye. Okay, bottom of your ear is usually right in line with your nose but in a photo um, because the head is curved, when it's curved, it's uh, um, closer and it appears larger than it is in real life. <laughs> um, so in here, it looks like my the bottom of my ear comes to my mouth. But if you if you even just go on your own ear, it's usually like right in line with your nose. Okay, what I tone the canvas with? Sure, um, this is ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and a little bit of yellow ochre. And um, I did it today a little bit darker than I normally do because I really just thought that it lent itself well. I may let some of it just show through. So that's why I kept it, made it a little bit darker. So that's a little bit of a highlighted patch on my neck. And the scarf will come down like this. That scarf is kind of a nice middle tone color, but in front here, it seems, if I were to squint or take this picture and make it black and white, it probably would be a little bit lighter value than um, just the middle tone that I have on the canvas. So I'm gonna rub some of that out like that. And then down the front like that. So this would actually rub out better if I had toned this canvas right before going live. But I gotta say, I was just so excited last night that I rubbed it, <laughs> I toned it last night and um, just in preparation for going live today. And it's fine, I've done that before too. And you can see it still works. And this is not linen. I do prefer to paint with a linen canvas um, this is uh, just cotton though, and that's fine. It's actually a really high quality cotton one, so I'm really happy about it. Hair, hair, whatever. Okay, so let's get some of these other lighter values in here. The front of this gravestone has a nice white. And I think that this one is important. I don't know why, it just feels like it is. Who knows, maybe one of my ancestors was buried there and I just didn't know it. I am Irish. And uh, it was so special being back there in Ireland. That was the second time I'd ever been back. In fact, the first time I went there in 1996, I was the first from my family who'd ever been back um, to Ireland since we left, since the family left. We are Callahan's. And um, I wish I knew more. <laughs> Apparently, we were from County Cork, as far as I know. So I did visit Cork, and it was a bustling city. I had no idea. I just thought it was all small and charming, but it was a very big city. And um, fishing, fishing village. I'm just mapping out some of these lighter patches in here. I don't want it to get too bright because. I want it to, um, I don't want it to be distracting. Always bearing in mind things that can be distracting and we want to watch those. Okay, so I like this passage of light in here. I want to make sure that this is kind of a unique shape, so I do want to get that. Okay. Now, I'm going to get a really small, this is the small brush that I use to start everything with. And with this, I'm going to refine some of my drawing now. So, turpentine, or not turpentine, Gamsol coming in here and just double checking where I have these um, more important anatomical features. And 
and I'm, all I'm doing is just rubbing it out. There's absolutely no paint on my brush. This is coming up to the ear. Like that. So there's this value mask here where the shadow from under the chin comes up behind the ear. And then the shadow from the hair just sort of defines that mastoid muscle that connects behind the ear. Cleaning that ear shape up. And you can see how I'm pushing that dark back a little bit, just like that, just by rubbing it. And I'm taking some of this dark that's already there and letting my brush pick it up and moving the hair around to create that softer hair effect. Now I've got some of this on my brush, so I might just figure out where my eye sits in the socket right in here. And as this comes down my temple and then the cheekbone is right about in there. And that was just very subtly done with a little bit of paint that I picked up just from the canvas. Just moving that that way. Okay, and then ears have a angle to them, which I can kind of fiddle around with more of that later. This little accent. was doing. Maybe I was saying something. All right. All right. So we're getting places. Gosh, I guess my nose goes out farther. <laughs> All right. And then the top of my head, I want that. I want to rub out some of that. If I squint down at this painting, I don't really see where that value separation is from the top of my head to the background there, so I'm kind of just letting my brushwork go right up into that. There's not much of a differentiation in there. I'll just play with it that way. <laughs> oh, um, sorry, I didn't hear that. Yes, this is part one. Yep, part one. We're going to be doing these in a series. And like I said at the beginning, I'm not sure if these will be um, in uh, all of them live. I thought that it might be kind of fun to do this one live um, because I, it's, it's easy to see the whole thing. When I start getting into some more of the detail, it might be easier if it's um, just filmed separately and then I can zoom in on those things. And um, But I don't know. Maybe they'll all be live. I don't know. Sometimes my week gets incredibly busy and unforeseen things happen and a live video is just the easiest way to go. <laughs> and um, you know, I gotta say, I do enjoy talking and seeing your questions at the same time. I think that's a lot of fun. So there's that. Okay, moving along. There are some bushes and things back here that I kind of wanted to play with those and under my nose. Okay. All right, so there's that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just take a few more little bit of time here and go through and refine the rest of everything so that I have a little bit more clear picture of where I'm going to go next time we're together. So uh, dipping my brush, just making an inky soupy mixture. Let's just clean up some of these passages.
So just going through here, wiping my brush off. Look at, you can see I wipe my brush off so much. Um, I do believe that this process of cleaning our brush is as important as the actual painting itself, especially when you're doing this technique where you're rubbing on and rubbing off um, like that. Very important. I'm looking at this negative space created by from my hair to the scarf, which is in here, um, to the jacket back here. I like that shape. I think it's interesting, so I want to make sure that it's not lost. To that, okay. There we go. Now the scarf, gosh, I'm anxious to do that green on the scarf. I love that color. <laughs> um, like if you're just joining, I said I had got this scarf at the bed and breakfast there in Tipperary. The daughter was knitting these and she had several done and I just loved the color of this one. And I'll tell you what, everywhere I wear it, I, people like, they say, oh, I love the color of that scarf. I get to tell them about this lady who made them in Tipperary, Ireland. And that, that actual design on there of knitting is called Irish Moss. So it seemed um, seemed the appropriate one to purchase. And I love that I'm, I'm wearing it in this painting here because, like I said, I just really want to get that feeling of that color green just blending in with the grass. So it almost looks like that and... The landscape are one. I know it's silly, but it, whatever. <laughs> I have a romantic heart, and those things are important. Uh, anyway, so again, just working on some of these shapes. I think the way that it kind of falls off that way is really interesting. Just soften that. You can lighten up on your pressure when you're kind of making those scumblings and uh, it, it has an interesting effect here too let's get a sharp accent right here because i see one boom right there ultramarine blue burnt sienna that's all i'm using on this um today for this lesson I'm also going to try to get in some of those darks as I saw them before. And I know my arm is in there somewhere. I'll dig it out. No worries. Remember, if you did something once, you can do it again. And probably better the second time around. That's what I always say. In fact, so many times I have either lost things or um, for whatever reason, I had to redo them. And it usually is better the second time around. Now I like the shape created by the scarf and the background back here. So I'll clean my brush off and I'm gonna work on getting that shape a little bit more accurate to what I see back in here. There's this nice negative quality, negative space quality, it's not negative. But there it is like this and then and then it kind of just fades away into this, this brick shadow stuff back in here. I don't want it to be really distracting, but just suggest it right in there. Yes, in fact, I do have a smaller brush. <laughs> I actually had somebody once on a live video say, why aren't you using a bigger brush? And it occurred to me, I was using this for, you know, like the whole painting. Um, and I could switch to a bigger one, but right now, because I am doing some finer drawing, um, I want the smaller control here, just to get some of those in place. This will be fun to do the, the blue lighting on this black. I love the subtle shades in black. There's always um, warm tones and cool tones within the, the black passages. So that'll be fun to get those. Velasquez was a master at painting blacks. 
I studied him when I was um, a teenager. I, I did a, a couple of master copies of Velazquez's work, and um, you know, you really learn how to handle blacks and other colors. Um, but he was very good. Rembrandt too was another one. His, I don't know that Rembrandt actually used black on his palette, but um, you can get a pretty nice black if you just mix. Uh, well, I mix burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, so that's what I do. I used to mix burnt umber and, and blue, and that gave me also a nice rich black. Other people use um, just different colors. You can do alizarin crimson and thalo green. That would be pretty strong. So I like how this top of this gravestone kind of connects with the bushes back here. I think that's cool. I do want, again, I'm looking for everywhere that I can connect something because that will give you strength. And also, I'm always looking for angles, making um, your drawing as strong as possible by making the, your angles nice and sharp. Okay, so. I think that we're nearing a great stopping place for day one. I think that this is a pretty solid foundation. Um, of course, I, I will be tempted to pick on it during the week that we will not be together, but I think that this will be a good project that um, I, can, I can do. I think that there will be a lot to talk about with this. And so while I wrap up what I'm going to do today, I'm going to fill your ear with everything else I'm doing. Um, in case you're new to me or my YouTube channel, I am revamping the the YouTube channel and just kind of cleaning things up and refining and so forth. I um, be I will be adding a few fun features once in a great while. I'm going to upload an ASMR video just because I think they're fun. Um, I'm just going to stick with it right to this channel and that may just be a, a fun little uh, just a just a break from the norm. And um, I'm also going to be uploading uh, a lot more regularly in the summer. I was very busy running all over the country and doing different things. Um, so, but I'm back to being more consistent and I'm really excited about some of the ideas and things that I'm going to be doing for upcoming videos. So if you're not um, connected with my channel yet, go ahead and subscribe and hit the little bell so that you know when I'm either live or um, if I've uploaded a new video, you can save it to your watch later list, whatever. And um, so make sure to do that. I always share links down below of um, the different things that I am doing. It, like I mentioned earlier, I'm executive director with the Renaissance Creative Arts and Renaissance Academy of Fine Arts. Like I said, we're getting into master copies and portraits coming up here very soon. And um, actually, next week we're doing master copies for two weeks. We'll be doing that, which I think is a great segue into um, portraiture. So that'll be great. That'll be exciting. Looking forward to that. Like I said, when I was younger, I did a master copy of Velazquez and learned so much doing that. So I would encourage you to click those links below and if you're curious at all and if you don't want to do the whole year of Renaissance Academy we we sell the just the different segments if you just want to do portraits or you just want to do still lifes or plein air you can just buy just those six weeks or five weeks or whatever they were and um, I think that makes a lot of sense to do it that way too so it's 30 31 weeks that we are doing the Academy for and um, you don't have to do all those, like I said, but some people do, and we have a great time. We have our own private Facebook page, and uh, it's great camaraderie. People from all over the world, and people sign up at their own time, and do work at their own pace, and uh, so that's good. And then, um, 
That's renaissanceacademyoffineart.com. You can learn all about that. And then um, also, Renaissance Creative Arts is my other company. And with that, we upload new videos, packages that we sell. Just got back from Colorado. Uh, I was my business partner, Daniel Hilito, and we filmed seven videos plein air painting. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? I'm working, I'm teaching all about being efficient and composition and, um, sorry, I'm focused here. Composition and just, yeah, just working quickly because time is of the essence. Efficiency, values, and composition. All right, so I wanted that a little bit lighter up there just to help with that passage. Okay, so I think that that is about it for day one. <laughs> um, I think that from here, I can probably start in with color next week. I think I'll work on maybe some of the background. What I liked about this painting too, or this photo, was that um, it, I get the opportunity to do landscape and different textures, portrait, whatever, uh, as well as the somewhat spiritual meaning behind it. I think it's um, kind of profound in that matter. <laughs> so that is as far as I'm going to take day one. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And so I will be back next week, whether it is live or, um, or I previously record it and upload it. Um, yeah, I think that I think that this is good, and I hope you enjoy this. And if you follow me on Facebook, and the link to my Facebook page, I'll just put it down below too, so you can find it. But um, if you'd like to print out a copy of this and paint along with, you certainly are welcome to do that. And um, I do, honestly, I believe anyone can do this. So um, go ahead and do it. I would love to see your work sometime. Follow me on Facebook, and you can share um, on my professional page on Facebook what you've done. Um, anyway, so I would, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just thankful for this and you guys have a wonderful day. I will see you next week. Okay. Bye-bye.